uh, here we are on our adventure through 52 weeks of why. And uh, this week I have a special guest who's become a very good friend. Uh, we've worked on a couple of projects together and uh, really have a lot of admiration for her and uh, her style as uh, a person and a parent. And uh, I'm just happy to have her here on this journey with me. And I want to share a quick quote before we get into introductions. Um, and this one, again, it all kind of goes back to the why and the exploration of people's why. And the quote is, the more you understand what you do and why you do it, the how gets easier. And all the quotes that I read about knowing your why, they all boil back to this, this sequence of events that leads you to your how. Um, and it's really cool to understand the differences between the why and the how and how the why inevitably motivates your how and what you do. Um, so my guest this week is uh, Cassandra Compton. Cassandra is amazing. She is uh, one of the people that has helped me in my coaching um, and being a coach. And I've learned a lot from her and her style of being a coach. Uh, first, I have to thank you for being here because I know you're, you're super busy. Thank you, William. I'm so happy to be here, and I am honored that you chose me to be part of your 52 Weeks of Life. Great. So I want to share a little bit of information about Cassandra because she's got a, a cool story. Um, she lives in Ellicott City, Maryland right now um, and is in the same business that I am, works for Fairway Independent Mortgage uh, in the D.C., Maryland, Virginia area. Um, she was born in Italy. And uh, father is a retired Navy veteran, so she traveled all over the place. Um, and now she is a wife and a mom of a 12 and a 16-year-old, has two dogs, and is also a coach through Fairway Ignite. Um, Cassandra, what's your why? So you know, this, is, this is an easy one for me, although it has evolved throughout my life and my career, it, it has always centered around family. Um, when I was younger, uh, growing up, and, you know, when I went to college, and when I started my career, I always wanted to make, I always wanted to really work hard and make my family proud. Um, that was my why. I wanted my family to be proud of me. I wanted them to be able to say wonderful things about me. I wanted to be able to work really, really hard at my career and grow um, and just break the glass ceiling as, as a woman in the finance world. Um, and I really did well at that. Honestly, never, ever thought, I wasn't the kind of person who dreamed about, you know, my wedding, my fairy tale wedding and having kids and getting older and all of that. I really just wanted to work hard and make my family proud. Um, fast forward, I got married and I had two children. And my why like evolved and it, it became my girls, you know, my husband and my two daughters and everything I do my entire life, every decision I make, whether it's career, whether it's personal, whether it's buying a car, every single decision is now about my children. Um, they have become my why. So I went from my wife saved my family, but it changed. It wasn't about me making others proud. It was about me raising my daughters to basically, I guess maybe it is about making others proud because I want them to be proud of me. I want them to want to, to see me as a role model. I want them to want to be kind to people and just want to um, kind of be aspired to, to, to be independent and do those things that I did, but it went from being doing those things for my parents to doing those things for my children, which I honestly never ever thought that would be me. I really, really thought I would be a career woman for the rest of my life and I would just, you know, be a CEO one day perhaps and, and grow and develop in my career. But I, I kind of am a CEO, I guess, of my house, <laughs> my home. <laughs> so. But it, it did it did evolve. I won't say it changed. I'll say it evolved. So, I first of all, I can relate to your why so so much because of having children myself. Um, and I do think that they you can't help but change as a person when you are responsible for the lives of your children. 
Um, you're in a different boat than I am, right? Mine are much younger. Uh, so I have a little bit more responsibility for their lives, literally, uh, than you with teenagers. Um, but I think making them proud is an interesting way of putting it. I like that you arrived at that just in your, your discussion of it, because I think that, um, that your family is someone that you want to strive to be your best for. Um, and I think that that, that that really correlates very well to, to your why. So when you look back on um, making your family proud in terms of your parents, um, in your mind, did that mean being the career woman? Did that mean um, having high aspirations for success? And now coming into being a mom, that that why changed, even though it's making them proud, it has a different definition. Talk about that for me. So I was the first, I'm the oldest grandchild on both sides, my mom's and my dad's side. And the first one, of course, to go to college um, and graduate from college. And I was, you know, being the oldest, you, you have a certain burden on your shoulders. Um, and I, I carried that. But for me, it was always wanting to do better and wanting to be better. I never felt the pressure of having to do better. I just, there was something inside me that I just wanted to do better. And I honestly think it's because I watched my parents and the role models they were for me, um, always striving to, to do more, to give more. I mean, you know, my father's being in the military, you start out with very humble beginnings in the military. Um, I remember things like, you know, going to McDonald's was a treat for us. You know, we'd go once a week to McDonald's after church on Sunday, and it was a treat for us to go to McDonald's. Well, my kids, McDonald's is not a treat, okay? <laughs> like, not a treat. <laughs> Why are we going to McDonald's, you know? So I think that, you know, just wanting to, to make my family and my parents proud of me, wanting to, to be, to take everything they gave me and just um, run with it, you know, make them, make them proud. Um, I, I, my mother told me, I think it was my mom, years and years and years ago, it might have been my dad, it was one of the two. I remember we were sitting and talking and we were talking about in a hundred years from now, I was having an issue at work, not here, previous job. Um, and we were just talking about work in general. And one of them said to me, in a hundred years from now, they're not going to remember Cassandra. Oh, Cassandra, she was the best whatever. No one's going to remember who Cassandra was. So that just weighed on me a little bit. And it, and it was, but in a hundred years, my family will. And so that kind of legacy that you leave, like with your parents and with your children and with your cousins and just family and the legacy that you leave with your family is really, really important to me because in a hundred years, people are going to rem remember William. The people in your family will remember William. They'll remember the stories about William. They'll remember William and, and who he was and his persona. The company may not. So that just resonated with me. And it is my family is most important to me, how my family remembers me, how the memories my family has about me. Those are the things that are most important and those things that I build with them. Um, of course, work is very important to me, but, but my family kind of trumps at the top. What a powerful statement to give to you, um, to, to remind you. Uh, it, it almost is a, a roundabout way of reminding us to be selfless. Um, because we have this tendency as humans to be very self-involved and self-righteous and think very highly of the importance of what we do and how we do it. Um, and and it's, it's so humbling to hear that and say, well, listen, in 100 years, the only people that are going to care or remember who you are and what you did they are your family. Um, and it really does place the emphasis where it should be, right, which is on your parents and your siblings and your children and grandchildren and generations to come. So um, when you wake up in the morning, how does that, why, how does that get you going first thing in the AM to start your day? So I'm not a morning person. So it, it takes me getting up in the morning, <laughs> a little bit of caffeine. Um, and then my why gets started. Uh, no, I, I'm, I kid, I kid, I joke. So 
I, they're the first, my family is the first thing I think about in the morning. Uh, it used to be a long time ago. It used to be work. The first thing in my mind was work, work, work. Um, now it's my family. I get up in the morning, you know, help kids get the kids get ready to get ready for school, get them out the door. It's, it's all about them. My oldest um, is usually up and getting out as I'm waking up. My husband kind of takes care of her and then I take care of the little one because again, I'm not a morning person, but it's that back and forth texting because, you know, Snapchat and text are kind of like the modes of communication with teenagers. You're not there yet, but you'll see. Um, so, you know, my, my oldest will snap, she'll send me a Snapchat, like a good morning Snapchat and I'll snap her right back. But it's, my mind is always with family the, from the second I get up in the morning. Um, and then of course the youngest I get to actually see and embrace and, and, you know, get her grumpy rear end out of bed. So that's always fun. Um, but then it's, you know, mom, I love you. Have a great day. And off to school. Uh, it, they are what drives me. And, you know, I see my husband every morning. So it's starting the morning with him as well. So it's really just, I, I do my best to start my morning with my family and my, on my mind versus what's coming up at work. Then when, once everybody is off to work, we've all started our day, then work starts for me. What a great way to bookend your day, right? So you, you start that out with with what better way to start the day and your mindset and your, your, your orientation for the day with family. So let's the other end of the book. And then at the end of the day, um, how do you know at the end of the day that you rest your head on the pillow with that sigh of accomplishment that you've done it? Um, how do you know that your why has been fulfilled? That's a great question. Um, so it's interesting that you ask it because, and, and how you articulated it with it being bookends, because I start my day very much how I end it, or I end my day very much how I start it. My family is the last thing on my mind. Um, same thing. My, it's funny, but my oldest daughter will send me a snap from bed and it says, good night. Okay. We're like on a streak. If you don't know about streaks, you'll learn but she'll send me a good night streak. And I just tucked her in. Like I just went and tucked both of them in and it's good night. I love you. Don't forget to say your prayers. I leave, I come to bed, you know, kiss my husband. Good night. Lights out, go to sleep. You know, my phone buzzes. I look at it. It's my oldest with a good night streak <laughs> on Snapchat, but they are the last thing on my mind. You know, I pray every night before I go to bed and my family is, the last thing that I pray for. So I start my day with them in my, in my mind. I end my day with them in my mind. They're like the center of my entire day. Um, I don't think I make a decision without somehow including the two of the, my two kids and my husband. So knowing you in, in a strictly business capacity, um, it's so cool to hear this because I know how seriously you take work. Um, the, the first part of what you said, right, how uh, you pictured yourself being a CEO or, or a successful person in business, like I can totally see that in our interactions on a business level that, that you take it so seriously and you really give it 100% of your all. And it's, so, it's even more powerful to hear that um, your day is bookended with your family and your children and that thought of legacy um, and making your parents and your children proud. Um, it, it shows in your business acumen that you're family oriented and that it motivates you and that that's part of your uh, barometer for decision making all rotates around what's going to be best for your kids and for your family. Um, any final thoughts before we sign off? No, um, I appreciate the, the time you spent with me this morning, William, and you really have my, have my thoughts turning. So thank you for the question. No problem. I, I, as I said, when we started, I can completely relate to your why. Um, the exploration has been so interesting to hear how everybody's way of articulating their why. It may involve family. Um, but so many different explanations about why their family is important and how that impacts their why. And, and I really appreciate yours and, and the way that your why helps you bookend your day from start to finish and influences the decisions that you make. Um, and I can, I can assure you, 
that you will be remembered in a hundred years by your family. Oh, thanks, William. Thanks Mission for being accomplished. Here. <laughs> That's right. Mission accomplished. Thank you again. <laughs>